So in this step, we're going to uh, look at the large eddy simulation. First of all, we've already uh, talked about uh, the nature of this model. It's a two-dimensional one. And in order to enable the LES model in Fluent, you have to write a code uh, as uh, shown here in the console. It's in blue. So you have to start with a bracket, open a bracket, and write RP set var uh, or variable. And then you put in quotation LES2D etc and then you close the bracket so by writing down this line press enter uh, that will provide us uh, now with the large eddy simulation in the viscous model otherwise you this would be disabled because it's a two-dimensional model All right so once you've chosen that we can continue now with the model but probably i would give a short uh, brief summary if you want to what large eddy simulation represent. It's basically a combination of uh, modeling turbulence and resolving turbulence. So we know that the uh, direct numerical solution is a very expensive type of uh, model. It basically resolves all the scales, uh, temporal and and uh, spatial scales uh, for turbulence. Uh, so it takes ages to do a very simple kind of problem. There is a different way to do that by filtering the smallest scales and model them using similar type of a rents model and then you can resolve the larger scales of the eddies so you can see eddies at larger scales uh, by uh, choosing the large eddy simulations uh, and this is what the model here does actually it's like a it's basically a compromise between rents and a direct numerical uh, solution all right, so now we've chosen the large eddy simulation. We go to the boundary condition. Nothing changes from the previous uh, simulation. Just to let you know, though, in order to, to start with this, I'm not going to start with uh, initializing it from time equal to zero. Basically, what I would do is, if you remembered in the last case, we, have, we, run, we ran the uh, simulation uh, under a steady state condition, and we reached a converged case. Um, and then we switched it to transient. And this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the converged state of the previous model using the K omega SST uh, as an initial condition and then continue from there uh, using the transient uh, method. So we have a transient model in here. Now we define the reports like we've defined them in the, uh, in the last uh, simulation. The boundary conditions would remain the same, so we have an inlet condition of 0.2 meter a second and an outlet condition, uh, outlet pressure condition at 15 southern pascal. Once you've done that, it's time to initialize the model using the hybrid initialization, and then you can go to run calculation and use uh, a smaller time step. And instead of 5 10 to the power minus 4 second, I'm using here 2 10 to the power minus 4 second with an amount of time step that would equate a 1 second full simulation. The maximum uh, iteration per time step would remain 45, and I doubt you would need that. Uh, it would need to reach that number anyway. And then you can start by calculating the simulation, uh, by calculating the case, sorry. So... The next step, it's uh, we are going to collect the pressure information from the reports that we've set up from both models, and then we're going to plot them on Excel and compare the difference and also calculate the K value or the flow coefficient. Okay, so basically to retrieve all your report files, go back to the original folder where you saved the workbench case and click on DP0, and you can see here we have two cases one for the uh, K-Omega SST uh, URANS model and the second one is for the LES model. So if you click on the first one and then uh, if we go to Fluent, you can see all the set of files or report files that I have in here. So to open that with uh, Excel, click on Open With. And if you don't have Excel in here, then we probably can better start with Excel itself. So if I click File, Open, and I open the list uh, in on Excel. So you can see this this one is for the uh, inlet. So this is at the uh, basically uh, upstream of the valve, 
upstream size of the valve and then if I switch to the second report file this is at the downstream side of the valve. If we collect just few information uh, basically let's collect the last information we had from the calculation and we take it to the other Excel sheet which is here. Here we go. So you can see now at uh, this time step which is 2473 uh, we have uh, at the upstream side of the valve uh, a pressure of 15,074 Pascal and the downstream side of the valve we have 14,928 Pascal. If we subtract the two, we get a, a delta P of 145.9 Pascal. To calculate uh, the K value, we all remember, remember we have K is equal to the flow rate uh, divided by... Uh, the square root of uh, delta P. The flow rate is in uh, meter cube per second. So sorry, the flow rate would have to be in meter cube per hour and the uh, delta P should be in bar. So to check our uh, to check the flow rate in here, uh, all you need to do is go back to fluent, uh, go to fluxes, mac, uh, mass flow rate at the inlet, and it's 31.54 kilogram per second. Uh, to calculate the flow rate, uh, we need to divide uh, that by uh, the density of the water. So 31.5 divided by 998.2, you get 0 0.031 cubic meter per second. Now, if you multiply this by 3,600 seconds, we get it in cubic meter per hour. So we have 113.53 cubic meter per hour. Now, uh, this is uh, the delta P in Pascal. To, to turn this into bar, you have to mm, divide it by or multiply it by 110 to the power uh, minus 5. There we go. So this is it in bar. And this is the uh, flow rate in cubic meter per hour. So K value then, should that be equal to this divided by the square root of this one, which is the pressure. And the K value in, in this particular case is 2,971.7. Right, how about now trying the LES method and see and compare the two different uh, K values. All right, so I loaded now the uh, report files from the LES model and we're going to collect as well uh, similarly the uh, pressure value downstream and upstream the valve at time equal to one second. So uh, I'm going to get that this is upstream and I Put it next to the downstream side at the same time step. Here we go, and we calculate the delta P. So this minus that, and you can see already that the delta P using the LES model is a little bit higher than what we have uh, we witnessed in the uh, URENS model. So to cap it in, in the URENS model, we had a delta P of 145.9 Pascal, but in this particular case we have a 166.4 Pascal. So it's a, if we just put it here, we have this minus that. We have 22.5 almost Pascal of difference between the two models. Uh, now to calculate the K value again, so if we collect the uh, previous information from the URENS model, which is in here, uh, we know that the flow rate is 113.53 cubic meter per hour. So we go back 135, sorry, 113.5 cubic meter per hour. So is this divided by the square root of 166.4? Sorry, uh, we the square root of the pressure, but the pressure has to be divided by well, uh, or multiplied by 110 to the power minus 5 to turn it from Pascal to bar. 
right? Press enter, and this is the uh, the K value with the LES uh, model. So the K value is 2,782, and uh, for LES model, as for the uh, uh, Urans model using the K Omega SST transient model, the K value is. 2971.7 so you can see that the k value using the uh, urens model is a little bit higher than what we've got from the uh, les uh, model the difference is acceptable i would say um, and it's obviously uh, we need to look at which model is the most accurate and i in my opinion i believe that the most accurate model is the les model because it captures uh, larger scale eddies in a better way uh, it captures the fluctuation of velocities which this also has an impact on the pressure itself so uh, before ending the simulation let's have a look maybe at the animation uh, of the two transient model for one second uh, we can do that by going to CFD post and uh, we can um, you know make an animation there Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna just drag a result window in here. Remember, we can uh, we can just join the two results in here. But what I want to do is create two result windows and load all the time step for each case uh, separately. So I will edit the result, and from here I can go to File, Load Results, and you can already see that I have two folders: one for the LES result and one for the K Omega SST transient. So I click on that and I would choose the last CDAT file. By doing that, it will load the whole series of result files. Press OK. OK, so now it's loaded. If you go to the time step selector and start from the first time step. Uh, just to let you know, uh, I'm going to just do up to 0 0.6 second rather than one second and press on the animation. So I'm going to just do a zero, up to 0 0.6 seconds for the uh, K Omega SST model and probably I'll see what I'll do for the LES. Um, and then you can choose the time step, uh, you save the movie, save it wherever you want on a directory of your own choice. I would choose the uh, MP4 uh, type. And we can click save. You can go to options as well. Choose the um, image size or the video size, so 180. And then in advance, you can choose the quality, which is the highest. Press OK. And before you click on play, let's put the uh, contour that we want to visualize. So I'll click on this contour. I use one of the symmetries. I press two. That's too much. Maybe I will put one hundred and twenty-five, uh, and I'll go for the velocity. And for better visualization of the velocity contour, you can choose a different uh, uh, contour colors. I'm gonna uh, use the grayscale one. Here we go, and we start the video, and we click on play. Once I click on play, it's going to generate one video for this case, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the results file generated from the LES model. And then I will just show them uh, both to you as a comparison. Uh, I hope you liked this uh, video, and uh, I hope it's as clear as it could be. Thank you for watching, and take care.